After a UFC tenure of just over two years, Tom Aspinall has become one of the most highly touted contenders in the British MMA scene, quickly putting the top of the heavyweight division on full notice. Looking to follow in the footsteps of icon Michael Bisping and recently crowned welterweight champion Leon Edwards, Aspinall aims to become the third ever English champion in UFC history, and for many, it's hard to see why he won't reach the summit of the sport soon. I'm Leo Cooper, and this is the emphatic rise of Tom Aspinall. On the 26th of July, 2020, Tom Aspinall would finally make his long-anticipated UFC debut on the prelims of Fight Island 3, with fellow countryman and middleweight Darren Till headlining the main event against Robert Whittaker. Amidst a near-empty crowd in Abu Dhabi, Tom Aspinall would dispatch contender Jake Collier in just 45 seconds, landing a heavy knee to the midsection before following up with a flush 1-2 combo to the chin, sending his opponent into the canvas. This would earn him a performance of the night bonus of $50,000. His second fight, just two and a half months later, would be a similar story. Once again on Fight Island, Tom faced French UFC debutant Alain Badeau in a prelim bout. Utilising his hand speed, he pressured Alain against the cage with short strikes and clinch work, before shooting a double leg that drove him to the mat. Now in mount, elbows and heavy strikes would see off the Frenchman in just over a minute and a half. Although quick finishes were naturally common within the heavyweight roster, the manner of Tom's finishes had proven to be far more than relying on sheer power to finish a fight. The surgical precision of his strikes were evidently a problem for his opponents, with the Englishman showcasing an elite striking acumen in just over two minutes of fight time. Tom's third fight in his UFC tenure would be one that truly showcased his multifaceted talent, facing his toughest challenge to date in previous UFC champion and veteran Andrei Arlovsky. With a record of 34-20, and 20, the difference in experience was evident, and despite being 41 years of age and past his prime, was enjoying somewhat of a career resurgence with three wins in his last four. For Aspinall, however, this fight was a hallmark moment. Young versus old, the passing of the torch. Andre was more than just an opponent. This was someone who he had looked up to and watched for years. Beating such a decorated individual would no doubt give him the plaudits he deserved. And beat him he did. Opening the first round, Tom would immediately establish a dominance in the striking department, stalking Arlovsky against the cage and utilising feints with the hands and lead leg to land at will from range. The fruits of his labour would come to bear just over 90 seconds in, with Tom landing a short right hand that stunned Andre, before unloading with an array of combinations. The veteran's durability proved to be an advantage, as Arlovsky withstood the storm and survived the remainder of the round. Round 2 would start similarly, with the patient Aspinall creating openings with feints and once again landing from range. A sudden blast double drove Arlovsky to the mat, and in a predatorial fashion, the Englishman would take the back and sink a rear naked choke against the cage just seconds later. He had done it. The finish would earn the Englishman another performance bonus, and has aged extremely well, with the veteran Arlovsky bouncing back from the loss with three straight wins over other prospects at the time of recording. Tom's clinical performance was in part a testament to his esteemed ground game. A black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Tom has trained under his father Andy since just seven years old, who currently coaches under the esteemed gym Team Carabon. Based in Liverpool, they have been the base of operations for many a UFC alumni, including middleweight Darren Till. With his ranking in the top 15 established, Tom began setting his eyes on climbing through the minefield of top heavyweight talents ahead, the first of which, polar bear Sergei Spivak. Amassing a record of 13-2 and, and coming off three straight wins, the number 14th ranked Moldovan looked to derail the hype train from gathering any more steam. For a fourth time, the Englishman would be fighting to a near empty crowd, once again in the apex centre. Similar to his previous fights, Tom would be leading the dance once more taking control of the octagon centre and pressuring with feints to back up his opponent. Sergei would seemingly have no answer, struggling to read the hand speed of the Englishman, and following a stuffed takedown event from Spivak, Tom would engage in the clinch with digging knee strikes to the midsection, before following up with a close right elbow on the exit, landing directly on the temple. This would drop the Romanian, and follow up hammer strikes would secure his fourth straight victory, once again earning him a third performance bonus in four fights. Hey Tom, you got way. performance of the night. Whoa, I did. Way. Ah. Oh, <laughs> the heavyweight division was now on full alert to the young prospect. Despite the hype in which so many fighters got caught up in, one thing was certain. Tom had a humble and grounded approach to the fight game. Even with the allure of heavyweight gold on the horizon, shooting up the rankings to face a top five opponent in what would just be his fifth fight, seemed unappealing, instead preferring to gradually hone his skills and climb the ladder one man at a time. Um, I want to fight a ranked guy, 
Like, I know Sergey was ranked. I just want to fight guys that are, you know, around my ranking. I believe in earning your title shot. I don't believe in the hype train pushing you to a title shot. I believe in uh, earning it. So I want to fight the guy above me. Perhaps in many ways, Tom might have been seen as the antithesis to his fellow countryman Till, whose sharp striking and even sharper mic skills helped him climb from outside the top 15 to a title shot against Tyron Woodley in under a year. Losing via choke in the second, President Dana White would later say, following a consecutive loss to Masvidal, that they pushed him too quick. One might say Aspinall doesn't want to suffer a similar fate. In a fighting era of trash talking and brash personas, Tom's down to earth nature was a refreshing reminder of the reason many compete in this sport we love. A man who enjoys the simplicities in life and fights to provide for those he loves. The heavyweight is not one to flaunt the materialistic side of his success akin to a McGregor or Masvidal. For Tom, the true reward of fighting is family. Some people get money and they just start acting like an absolute <laughs> If you're an idiot, it's going to show everybody how much of an idiot you are when you've got money. And if you're normal, it's not really going to change you too much. So what's the difference between them and Weetabix? I didn't know the difference, but we're going to try them. Early in his career and as a father of three, Tom had previously struggled to make ends meet and put food on the table. But give the man an inch and he will most certainly go a mile. Scheduled to fight Shamil Abdurakhimov on March 19th, Tom would finally get his wish. A homecoming party in London to a packed out arena of 20,000 at the O2, headlining in his own country. Two months prior, however, Tom's opponent would withdraw and replacing him, the number six ranked six for eight giant Alexander Drago Volkov. The Russian's pedigree spoke for itself, with wins over former UFC champ Fabrizio Vadum and former Strikeforce, Dream and K1 champ Alistair Overeem in his locker. In his 43 fight tenure, Volkov had been knocked out just twice. Utilising his long frame and reach advantage, Volkov was known to attack from range, using heavy body kicks and long strikes to patiently dismantle his opponents. The run-up to the main event proved to be historic for the British MMA scene with the highly touted young prospect Mohamed Makayev opening the prelims by staking his claim on the flyweight division with an emphatic first round submission in just under a minute. Scotsman Paul Craig would find the mark with his patented triangle choke, ensnaring the Ukrainian Nikita Krylov inside the first. Show-stealing scouts duo Molly McCann and Paddy the Baddy Pimblet would light up the main card, capturing dramatic KO and submission victories respectively. With a first round TKO from Arnold Allen over fan favourite Dan Hooker, it would now all come down to Aspinall to round off a historic night of fighting and announce himself to the global stage as a top contender. With both fighters towering over the height of the octagon, the tension inside the O2 arena was palpable. With the round one bell sounding, the two would meet in the middle. Tom would adopt his signature style, dying in and out with high and low feints while sporadically landing low kicks in the opening minute. Volkov would naturally play at range, throwing sharp, quick kicks to the body and maximising his reach with the left jab. Just 45 seconds in, Tom would fish for the double underhooks and seize the opportunity with a trip to drive the Russian to the mat. Slicing elbow from top half guard would cut open Volkov's head, who frantically battled to get to his feet against the cage. The following stand-up exchanges once again went the way of Aspinall, before a masterful slip of a high kick and subsequent duck of a jab would open the chance for a blast double, which once again sent his opponent into the mat. Another huge moment for the Englishman. Once again in half guard, Tom would calmly listen to his father in the corner and once hearing the green light to attack the arm for a submission, would effortlessly secure a straight arm lock that would give him the victory. To an uproar of 20,000 fans, Aspinall would mount the octagon in celebration, finally gaining his crowning moment and biggest win of his career against one of the division's toughest. A third straight performance bonus would be the cherry on top for what proved to be the greatest night for British MMA ever seen. With a title shot against heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou now one or two fights away, Aspinall would now have to pass one of the toughest matchups in the division in number three ranked Curtis Blades. Beating him would no doubt solidify a matchup for gold, so the stakes could never be higher. Just months after his infamous victory against Volkov, the UFC would quickly return back to London for another UK showing, giving Tom the rare opportunity to headline back to back in his home country. Famed for his wrestling heavy style, Blades was arguably the litmus test for being competitive at the top. His oppressive style and improved striking allow him to constantly hang the threat of a takedown over his opponents creating openings on the feet. With losses only to the best heavy hitters of the division, in champ Francis Ngannou and fan favourite Derek Lewis, the Americans' credentials spoke for themselves. Following the regiment of his previous camp, Tom would spend the large portion of his time training at the Super Pro Gym in the Netherlands. The naturally taller and kickboxing focused sparring partners fit the bill for fighting a man such as Volkov. And although Blades naturally had a different fighting style, the experience Tom gained on his prior visit was so invaluable a return seemed necessary. 
With July 23rd arriving and once again in the O2 arena, the British scene hoped to take centre stage once more. And although impossible to live up to the success of the previous night, strong performances once again from young prospect Mohamed Makayev and now infamous Scousers McCann and Pimblet would hopefully be positive signs for things to come. Following a technical performance from Scandinavian Jack Hermansen, who would even use his mic time to sing Aspinall's praises, the crowd was primed and ready to witness another showing from the Brit. Everything was aligned for him to finally get his coveted title shot. Fifteen seconds would all it would take for his world to come crashing down. In agony, Tom would be carried out of the octagon and immediately taken to the hospital. The diagnosis, a sudden MCL tear, an injury so severe that he likely would not fight until 2023 at the earliest. And yet, Aspinall would remain resolute. Following a classy embrace with his opponent in the hotel post-fight, the long road to recovery would begin. Only time will tell if he will ever see again the top of the sport. The fight game is cruel and one that so many never succeed in. But if his dominant first act is anything to go by, I think it's fair to say this tale is far from over. Thank you.